Hello, I'm Chetin. I'm a systems engineer at Satisfy. Today, we are going to talk about our electronically steerable multi-beam antenna, which is based on our uh, prime digital beamforming chip and the BEAT RFIC chip for KU band. The demonstration is uh, taking place in an antenna mini test chamber, as we call AMTR, as you see here. And we'll be demonstrating a few of the functionalities like uh, beam steering, multi-beam, and satellite tracking. Prime is our newly released digital beamformer chip. It's a true time delay digital beamformer with a wide instantaneous signal bandwidth over 1 GHz. It supports up to 32 elements with 32 ADCs and 32 DACs at 3.52 giga samples per second each. It supports both full duplex and half duplex modes of operation. It allows for a highly scalable and modular design. It can be used to build antennas with tens of elements to thousands of elements. It has an IQ interface to RF integrated circuit up to 2 GHz. The chip has internal accelerators for self-calibration. It supports digital pre-distortion per each element, as well as equalization and pre-equalization per element. Prime supports multi-beam generation and interference cancellation, multiple modes for low power consumption, very fast beam switching in orders of tens of microseconds. It allows make before break and tracking and supports both linear and circular polarization. Beat RFIC is an analog transceiver that converts baseband signals coming from the digital beamformer to the KU band antenna panel and vice versa. It features four IQ transceivers capable of simultaneously transmitting or receiving four independent RF channels located at the same RF frequency. It has an analog differential IQ interface to the digital beamformer and an RF interface to the antenna. Beat supports KU band frequencies 13.75 to 14.5 GHz for TX, 10.7 to 12.75 GHz for RX. The RF bandwidth supported for TX is roughly 500 MHz and for RX is roughly 880 MHz. The BEAT RFIC supports automatic linear polarization control and tracking without mechanically moving the antenna. It supports digital pre-distortion and half-duplex operation. It also supports external RF LO daisy chaining to multiple chipsets and internal distribution to four TX RX chains. This is the demonstrator of Satisfy's KU band multi beam antenna showing the receive functionality. The setup is built inside an antenna mini test range, AMTR, which is a portable anechoic chamber. In the setup on the left side, we have an RF control box which contains two modem boards based on the Satisfy SX3000 SOC. The modulators in the RF control box are used to generate carriers in L-band, then upconvert and transmit them in the KU band via an open waveguide transmit antenna located on the left side of the AMTR. Inside the chamber, on the right side, we have a four-element KU band antenna sitting on a revolving pedestal, which can be rotated using our software. The four antenna elements are connected via the RF cables to the BEAT KU band RFIC evaluation board. The BEAT chip down converts the received signal and the analog baseband signal is then sent to the first prime evaluation board where it is digitized and processed by the digital beamformer. The digital beamformer can create multiple beams at the desired steering angles and send the data across a high-speed SIRDES link to the modem or, as we are doing in this case, to a reverse prime where it is converted to L-band and transferred to the modem over an analog interface. The modem will then digitize, demodulate and decode the data. For our first demo, we will be showing beamforming. One beam is generated using a single element of the antenna and fed to the first modem. Once this is complete, we will repeat the sweep for the four element case. In this case, for an antenna of this size, four element antenna, we expect a gain of about 12 dB in RSSI and that's what we should see in this plot. As the beam is pointing in boresight, you can now see that at boresight we actually do get a 12 dB gain in RSSI. For the second demo, we will be showing a multi-beam case. Um, in this case, we are going to be doing RSSI measurements on five beams via prime simultaneously. The patch antenna array is rotated again in the elevation plane from minus 90 
to plus 90 degrees as before. The five beams are generated at plus minus 40 degrees, plus minus 20 degrees and bore side. As we are sweeping across the elevation plane, we are collecting the power measurements for all five beams. We expect to see a maximum RSSI for each beam at its corresponding steering direction. So the first beam, which is pointing to minus 40 degrees, is already showing the maximum at the correct, correct polar angle. Now the second beam is now visible at minus 20 degrees to have the peak. The third beam at bore side. Now we can see the fourth and the fifth beams as well, in green and pink. So this verifies that our receiver is actually uh, able to beam form in five different directions as intended, as, as you can also see from the peak power levels. For our third demo, we would like to show tracking using our digital beam former. In this test, we have two beams. One is a static beam at bore side, and the other beam is tracking a satellite. We can see from our plots that as the satellite is moving, the fixed beam is showing the maximum SNR and RSSI at bore side as expected. However, the tracking beam is able to maintain a consistent RSSI and SNR between minus 60 and plus 60 degrees of polar angle. If we look at the plot closely, we will see that the radiation pattern of the steered beam is actually very similar to the radiation pattern of a single patch, which is showing us that the whole antenna array is actually acting like a super patch in the tracking case. Thanks for watching.